Uh, he's like he was the first Turkish MMA fighter. He was a Serralongo guy for a minute. Okay, I might I might if I saw his face, but I don't remember that name. Ow! What up, Stan the Man? What's going on, Stan the Man? Not here. much. Eve's Edwards joining us. Hello, Eve's Edwards. How you doing? I'm good, brother. Al, can you go, good to meet you, Al. Can you go long ways with your phone? Uh, sideways. Yep. There we go. I was just in my backyard chilling. That's it. Sun is still up. Are you in California or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Huntington Beach. Where, where are you? I'm on the East Coast right now. Oh, okay. Correct. Correct. Usually in L.A. though, right, Eves? Or are you not in L.A. anymore? Usually in L.A. I um, I'm gonna get back out there after this whole quarantine thing is over and. COVID and whatnot. Work starts up again. When Hollywood starts up again, I plan to get back out to, to, to California. It's it's bad in LA right now, so stay away. Yeah, right? It's really bad. Yeah, Long Beach especially, which is about 20 minutes from me. It's been like some of the places I personally go hang out, some of the cafes and bars, they've been torn down, man. Oh, wow. Oh, what? With uh, protesting and rioting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loot, oh, and rioting and less protesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's what, there. There's some people out there doing it peacefully, and then there's the yeah. people that are out there like, nah. While yeah. they're while they're doing that, I'm doing this. Yes, yes. Look, yeah. and, and I, I don't know what you guys were talking about before I got on, but I this is my personal question. I want to know this. Too. Look, I'm a minority. I'm an immigrant myself, right? So I am for the minorities, and I am for, I am for protesting peacefully and all of that, right? And I never had the privilege, so let me start by saying that. I was just messaging with one of my friends who was a journalist for Al Jazeera English. She's an Iranian Australian journalist, right? She has been posting about all of this and, and or whatnot. So this is exactly this is what I asked her. I said, Hey, how come we never started a movement for Palestine, Rohingya, uh, Myanmar, Tibet, Uyghur Turks? She goes, What do you mean? I said, Exactly. There are so many bad things happening in the world right now. A, a bunch of genocides happening right now, today, in 2020. We choose not to cover. So I'm just curious to see why this became... Because unfortunately, yes, racism has been happening. But this was just a very small glimpse that was being that was just filmed. This has been happening. This just didn't start yesterday. This didn't start with George Floyd. But why now? Because if it's just a trend that we're trying to follow, I choose not to be a part of it. But if we are really trying to make a change, I'm all for it. So here's 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 why now. And I'm not American also. I'm an immigrant, but I'm also a black man. And I do live in yeah. America. So I, I, I get it, right? Um, being a part of the diaspora, this the fact that like this happened just a few days ago. It also happened a couple of weeks ago. It happened years ago. It, hap it happens over and over and over again. And exactly. And this happens to people, to, to, to my people, right? People that we're, we're, we're promoted as lazy, um, good for nothing, and these different things. When we built this country for free, yeah. you know, uh, like all of, there's, there's just a lot of anger and I, I completely understand it. I mean, I feel it myself and, yeah. uh, the riots, like I understand yeah. rioting for a purpose, the looting, like, like I'm, I'm down with riots if, if, yeah. If it's 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 to show that you know if you're gonna keep doing this, we're not gonna stand here and take it. I'm not down with looting. I'm not like I'm not for that. But I I, on, I understand the anger. I'm on the same boat as you. I'm not you know I'm nowhere near. I'm not on the other side or anything. I'm you know I'm not privileged. I I never I never got those man. I'm on the same boat as you. I'm just trying to figure out just like. You. Yeah. But the pro the problem is the problem is. We can we can we we can get angry. We can we can show that we're not going to stand for this. We're not going to take it. But it's the people that do it. The people that commit these acts are. Yeah. Is the system going to going to punish them? Because that's the other thing. That's the reason why we have. That's the reason why it's a bigger problem for us. Because it happens, and then there's this 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 show, the charade of, okay, we're going to punish these guys, and then you arrest the guy. They arrest one guy. There were four cops involved with that. They arrest, they, they, they fired four guys and they charged one. What about the other three guys? What about the, the Asian guy who was stopping, 
stopping people from trying to help. What about the other two cops that held him down that you couldn't see from behind the car? You know, um, when 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 these guys go, the, the, their punishment is getting arrested and having their 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 reputation tarnished or sullied. They don't they don't go to prison, but you know, if a black kid gets caught with an ounce of weed in the car, like he's going to jail for 20, 30 years. But this cop gets a slap on the wrist, he loses his job, he goes to be a security guard, he goes to some other yeah. agency or something yeah. like that. It, it, there, there is, there's a reason for the anger, and I, I know you're not, you're not, you want to know why, but these are just parts of the reason. These well, aren't even yeah. the whole, entire, the entirety of the reason. Yeah. Was it? But, yeah. I, but yeah, my my point was, there's just a lot of things we need to be standing up for. But I am also trying to say that a lot of people are jumping on this bandwagon just for the grand man. Like that's what makes me mad. That's what pisses me off. Like. Okay, start a trend, but start a trend for a reason. I know a lot of people that are just, that are just doing it for it's just something to post about. Yeah, yeah, um, like that pisses me off. And and I I completely agree. It's it's my thing is when. Whoa, I'm sorry, my phone's about to ring, but I can't take okay. it. You're a popular man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now where did my Zoom go? Now my Zoom is a tiny screen. Here we go. Got it back. All right. So, what was I saying? What was about, that? Um, oh, you were talking about people doing it for the gram. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not down with that. Um, I think I, I, don't, I don't appreciate, you know, you joining my cause for likes. I don't, we don't do this for the likes. Like Exactly. George Floyd, Omri, Omri Ahmed, um, Trayvon Martin, these boys didn't die for the likes. Sandra Bland, they didn't die for the likes. And um, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not for that. I'm for like the people who are who are doing this for change. People who are doing this because we're fed up. I'm yeah. I'm 100 percent behind you. I'm 100 yes. percent with you, and I'm I'm gonna stand. I, I'm I'm ready to die with you. But yeah. yeah. If you're doing this for lights, you can fuck yeah. off. I've I've been unfortunately that's my problem, and unfortunately I've been I always had a problem with this. Something happens in Paris, France, because Paris is a cool place. Pray for Paris, like uh, posts and and hashtags. How come you don't do pray for Tibet or something? Or how come you never, you know what I mean? Like, why don't you start a cause for a real freaking reason? Like, people just choose for, people just pick and choose their causes, what they want to promote and be a part of it. If it's wrong, it's fucking wrong all around the world, man, 24 7. Yeah. Yep. So and everybody, my, everybody who knows me will tell you. Everybody who knows me will tell you this is, this is something for me. This is the thing that I stand up for. This is a fight that I'm willing to fight. Um, I like I know there are there are other problems in other parts of the world. I I feel for the Palestinians, and if if I were near them, or if I am with Palestinians, like with when I'm with Ramsey in the gym, or yeah, like I I yeah. would I would I would I got his back in those scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is the fight that I this is the fight that I'm in. If if we're if we're backstage and I'm fighting. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fighting tonight, but you're fighting first. I'll, I'll warm up with you. You know, I'm gonna root for you. But when you got there and it's your turn, like yeah. I hope you do well. But I still gotta focus on me. Yeah, I yeah. still gotta warm up. I still gotta make sure that I'm ready to go. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's my mentality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like me saying that, like I'm not even Palestinian or anything. It's just for me, it's a it's 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 a matter of humanity. Like it, it ain't no joke, man. Like people really take this shit as a joke. Like this could happen to us in a minute, which is happening today in America, but, you know. And people just think think this is a joke. Like I I've been to places or I come from places where this shit happens on daily basis, man. People are struggling. Yeah. And we're just doing it for the gram sometimes, and I'm like, that's that really bothers me. That just hurts. Me. You know. Well, so. well, people doing it for the gram also falls into the line of like hidden agendas. Like, I think, Eves, I saw you post that one thing of the guy saying how the people were protesting and walking for Black Lives Matter and, like, actual rioters just showed up out of nowhere and started, like, breaking into stores and they had bats and shit. And they were like, yo, we were being peaceful. It was a white dude, like a white hippie dude saying we were being peaceful. I I was in L.A. Yeah. And now people just showed up and they're inciting everybody and trying to incite a riot and trying to make us break stores and shit like that. And then you posted that other video that was actually really fucked up where people were trying to loot a gun store. You know, black guys were trying to root, loot like a, it looked like there was a white and black owned gun store and a bunch of black guys came to loot it. 
they waved down the cops. The cops came over and they handcuffed all the black guys. The the owners of the store. The owners of the store. The right. o- yeah. Yeah, there's it, definitely a, a, a systematic problem with the police. Systematic and systemic. Yeah, there's definitely a problem with the police and like what they see. But the, to, it also is that other side of the coin. They're not all bad. Me, I've had horrible experiences. Being a white person, white male from Long Island, suburbs... <laughs> I've had horrible experiences with police, but I have a couple friends that I've trained with over the years that are happen to be cops. I have other friends that are cops that aren't yeah. aren't the worst people. Now, yeah. how they are in their job, how they are when they're walking the streets of Brooklyn, I don't know. I've never been there, but you know, Sam, I- there's levels to this shit. There's um, so there's that. There you have you have shitty cops. You have cops that are shitty, right? But then you have sh- cops that are shitty, and they're going to be shitty to everybody. You have cops that are going to be shitty and they're going to target minorities. They're going to target the Hispanic guy. They're going to target the black guy, the black woman. They're going to target the people, right? And that's, that's of course, the biggest problem because then every, any, anybody's a target for that guy. You know what I mean? It's, um, just got to root this thing out of the core. I, it's one of those things where I say when, when, if you and I, if, if Al and I are our partners in police force, and Al goes in, we go into this business, and Al is, is, is leaning on them, and he's getting the payment from that. He's taking insurance money off of this business to, illegally, and he asks me if I want to share. Just because I say I don't want a piece of that, that doesn't make me the clean cop. You know, if I, if, I don't, if I don't do something about that, I'm a dirty cop, just like the Asian guy that was preventing those guys from, from trying to help George Floyd. You know what I mean? So there's, there's just levels to this, and it's like, you got to root this shit out from the core. Yeah. And now this whole George Floyd thing, that's a whole... Like, obviously, he should not have been killed or should not have died in that situation. But then you hear, like, all the stuff, like... I know they have the cop arrested right now, and they have him, I think, for second-degree murder. It's murder yeah. either way. Like, whatever and degree. Manslaughter. Manslaughter. Degree Mansla- manslaughter. Manslaughter. Yeah, yeah. But apparently, they had a backstory. Yeah, they they knew each other. I forget exactly how what what connection they had prior to this incident, and it was a few years prior to this. Yeah, so that almost brings in like the premeditated angle. I would think, yeah. like I think it should be cut and dry in this situation. Like is, the, and from what you see from that guy's, I've seen that George Floyd had a criminal history. I've seen that the cop had a very questionable, a lot of que- record. a yeah. very questionable police record. Like, I think that should be cut and dry. Like, I think that's what a lot of the uproar is. Like, remember, like, I don't know if you remember it, but you guys might be, I think, out. How old are you out? Uh, 34. So, same age. Don't ask me that question again. No, I remember 29. Just because I don't want to tell you. I just don't want to tell anyone what my age is. No, 29. Last, 29 yes. last time we had you on. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> and Eves, you were probably too young. You were able to conscient, like, get it in your head, but you were too young for, like, the Rodney King thing. Like, even, uh, I remember. I was 18 years old. Oh, so you were, uh, I thought you were younger than that. But uh, I remember there was a problem when it happened, but then when they found the cops not guilty, that's when shit, like, hit the fan. Yeah. No, that, 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 the timing is, is, is hand in hand, but that's not what set things off, okay? It was in, in L.A., South, South Central L.A., there was a little, a little black girl went into the store, she was going to buy some apple juice and this Asian woman, this Korean woman didn't, th- she thought she was going to steal it. She shot her in the head. Oh. And then that woman, she also got acquitted. And that's what set off the riots. And like, that's what, that's what set off the riots. But that's what I'm saying. If they let this cop off, I forget the cop's name, but if this cop does not get in, if this cop gets like some bullshit, like, oh, you get two years. You know, or nothing, or acquitted of these charges. I think there's going to be some real riots, and it's not even past protests. There's going to be some real riots, way I'm worse than that. what's going on now. When, 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 at some point, somebody's going to fire back. They're going, they're going to kill the wrong black person, and their family is going to go after everybody. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm the I'm the kind of guy. If I'm in that situation where that Asian where that Asian cop is trying to stop me from from helping that guy, if we got, I don't if it's four cops right there and it's me, Dennis Bermudez, 
fucking Squid and Joe Schilling or whoever, right? Or, or, or 15 guys. I'm telling them, look, they're going to kill this guy. And I'm willing to lead us in there to stop them from killing this guy, even if they kill me. But if they kill me, y'all kill them. And I'm good with that. I'm fucking good with that. You know what I mean? Because, like, at, at some point, you're going to run into those people. This is why they shut down the Black Panther Party. The the FBI played a big part in shutting down the Black Panther Party. And this is what the Black Panther Party was about. Protecting people and providing for their community. When 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 cops would pull over black people when the Black Panther Party was founded, Panther and Panthers were near. They they was to patrol their own neighborhoods. When the cops pulled over a black person, they would get out of the car, stand across the street from them with all of their weapons, and just watch the cops. They would point their weapons at the cops just to make if they're going to give the guy a citation, they give him a citation. But you're not going to violate his civil rights. Yeah. They didn't like that. They started passing laws to get those guys off the street with weapons. But still, to this day, you see a truckload of white guys walking up to City Hall with rifles over their shoulder. If if five black guys were to do that, they're shutting shit down. Did you see? Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, did you see the one story of the cop in or the sheriff in South Florida that was like, I want people to shoot protesters. He said some shit like that. He was like, if people try to loot your home, I want you to shoot them. Use your gun. This is a gun state. Take yeah. your take your gun out and shoot someone who tries to loot your house. But let me let me tell you a quick story. So I have a bunch of friends that work for um, Bellator, right? They're all from San Luis, you know, where I used to train. We always meet up when they're in town. And so one of them told me this happened after. So I was actually in the last year when we met up. I was like, yeah, how was San Luis doing? They were pretty much telling me how between cops and the civilians, there's there's no more trust going on, right? So my buddy drives on the highway. He has a nice M3 BMW. He's driving. Some messed up van rear ends him on the highway. He's like, what the fuck is happening? And then he calls 911 right when he's on the highway. And 911 pretty much tells him, just don't stop. Just take off. So high crime rate kind of went up in the last year in San Luis. Mm-hmm. Too, it's too much. Yeah. And anyway, he doesn't stop. So what they're trying to do is they rear end you and you and then they try to get you to pull over. So when you come out of the car, they pull a gun and do they do you know you know you're done. So, so my buddy takes off and he 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 makes it he makes it out of the out of the neighborhood, and he goes, dude, nobody called me back. Like nine one one did not even call them back to see if he was alive. Like people when when you call nine one one, they don't even show up anymore in San Luis. They don't come to your na- depending on the neighborhood. Like if you're from Chesterfield, the whitest town, they come, right? But if you're from like Ferguson or like Florissant, like North County, they don't show up anymore. Yeah. So where is this going to go? Yeah, that's yeah. that. That's not going to be a good situation. Yeah, once the, no. and that's what's developing right now. I think, especially with a lot of people that you're seeing, with the people that are all over Instagram and social media, the blackout Tuesday, people are losing trust, any type of trust yeah. they had in police. We've yeah. already okay. we've already lost all trust in government. Very few people have any trust in the government. Yeah. Th- that's what I'm saying. For example, even with the George Floyd thing, government has done so much. And they've covered up so much. We're never going to get to the bottom of George Floyd. And from now on, even with the corona thing, what is it? Season? Everybody's saying, is season two? When is season two coming, right? Like, it's a joke now. So the next time there's a real pandemic or any kind of serious situation goes on, what do you think is going to happen? You think you can quarantine me? You think you can keep me home this time? You keep lying to me. You think I'm going to believe you this time? And this is just like any kind of relationship between you know me and you, for example. You keep lying to me. Oh, come on, bro. This time I'm for real. This time I'm for real. I'm going to be like, no, fuck off. So that's my that's where I stand with the government right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I saw I saw Bisping post it, and it's so true. Um, if the coronavirus numbers don't spike and the second wave doesn't happen off of these protests, we've clearly been lied to. We've been lied to. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But that, like, is the proof right there. Like, you I don't s- need no more proof. <laughs> people are people are on top of each other right now, protesting. Nobody's keeping six feet distance. Yeah. Everyone's right there. I even see the I even see the chief of police shaking hands. I don't protesters. I don't remember <clears throat> um, which country, but it was one of the countries in Africa. It may have been Tunisia. I'm not sure, but anyway, the prime minister sent some samples to be tested for COVID, right? He sent samples 
So, um, some of them were animals, some of them were fruit. They all came back positive for COVID. So oh, he was like, yeah, you guys don't need to come into my country with your shit. Wow. I'll, so I'll they don't, they I'll don't find believe it there? I'll send it they, to you. Then they don't believe it there, huh? Uh, I don't know if they don't believe it, but um, I don't know if they don't believe the the virus exists or if they don't believe the World Health Organization is truly working on it. I yeah. don't know all the details to that, but I know he was like, WHO, you're not coming in here with that bullshit. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the CDC and and the World Health Organization, they're shot at this point. Yeah. They could tell you, you know, oh, you have like, you have cold symptoms. No, nah, I don't. You don't know shit. You know, like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but crazy times. But I have uh, something that maybe will pick up our conversation a little bit. This happy, this happy go lucky motherfucker. Who is coming on? Uh, is that the menace? menace? Yeah. Uh, good old menace. He... I'm in your thing. Hello. Dennis Bermudez. <laughs> I'm in your thing. <laughs> I mean, video. I didn't realize it was on already. My lady Danielle. What are you guys doing? What are we talking about in here, gentlemen? All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> Dad, you know the usual you know the you know the topic we were talking uh, racism we were talking about going out what do they call you bohemian eves bohemian we were talking about going out and starting a white turkish bohemian race war <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> uh, and now we got a puerto rican to join the cause with us hey i'm right here <clears throat> so how- stand for justice i got my mallet and everything Right, so how are you, Menace? Uh, I just got back from work. How was it? Me and Eves were holding it down. We did Craig Jones. Tatiana Suarez has to... She changed her schedule, so she had to go for a run in the mountains. So that was her deal. Does now, she have a fight? In Cucamonga? Uh, yeah, I think she's in Cucamonga. Yeah, Does she have a fight? In Riverside. No, uh, I thought we were going to ask her, but we're going to have to obviously reschedule her for maybe one day next week. But uh, I was gonna, that's what's been on my mind with her is does she have a fight? Because she's been out for a minute. Yeah. Uh, she wrestled at my university. I don't know if she remembers me because didn't, she didn't stay at my university for a long time. But she came to the, the first year we started a, a females program at my university. She came and she was like, obviously, we only recruited four. We only had like four chicks, I think, on the team the first year we started a program. And she was, I was, she would only train with the guys because she was so good. And she made the world team that year. She missed like two months of school and came back as a world medalist. And the next year she was like, fuck it, I'm leaving the school. So, because so, she was, I mean, we had a very good program, just not for, not, not a female program at the time. So. But weren't but, you around her weight class? Huh? Weren't you around her weight class? What are you trying to say? You were, like, de- you were going wrestle. with her. <laughs> How'd it go? <laughs> she, she was wrestling you. Yeah, right? like she wrestled with some of the guys, you know. Like, uh, yeah, she, but he he. Oh, the, any, any anytime, let me be let me be straight up. Anytime you have chicks on the team, everybody becomes an expert and tries to help them. In those situations, <laughs> I always stay away. I'm like, I'm. It's not my business. Like, I'm not that guy to pick that one girl on the team and try to be all helpful and try to coach her. I don't care. Like, I'm trying. I'm there for me. I really don't care. And yeah, everybody became a, I remember everybody became a freestyle expert. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers, never wrestled a day of freestyle in your life. I'm like, relax. Everybody knows yeah. a gut wrench all of a sudden. I'm like, relax. It's like, like, stick to your folk style and then worry about your own wrestling. I stick so. to showing girls high crotch moves. That's where <laughs> there I go. Stand. <laughs> there you go. That's even Dude, like. I remember, in, I remember in high school, you know, in every like school. There was that one girl who was like, I can do what guys can do. Yeah. Well, we had this girl. She played soccer. She was a year older than me, my boy. And I think she was like, blurry. She's like, I can wrestle. It, my boy is was it, like, is yeah. It, is, and she was is like, that, uh, is that Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you uh, talking about? You guys are about the same age. No? Me? You're an Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I wasn't even. I thought you were talking about Yves. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I, I didn't wrestle. <laughs> you didn't did Ellen DeGeneres. She wrestled with you. What is going on here? Am I missing a joke or something? <laughs> no. 
It's okay. But okay. but yeah. I was trying to I was trying to say that she, I know where her like what I know I have an idea what she ended up being. In no, the, in no the, in I don't the, think I don't think she did. She wasn't. She, I don't know. No. I don't. It, you know, this is after I graduated. Just. But yes. anyways, my boy grabs her like, you really want to do this? And she's like, yeah, let's yeah let's do it. But she was like flirting. She was dude. He uh, gra- locks up with her. She doesn't even know how to lock up. She's like, uh, he snaps her. Wham! To the ground. To the mat. Like, face first. <laughs> Spins around. Puts in her cradle and pins her. I'm like, dude, Mike, what? <laughs> Why did you just do that to her? She doesn't even know how to wrestle. She's not even your same weight. And she doesn't belong in here. So she <laughs> yeah. gets to get. Wait. I think she just wanted like the flirt with her for a little bit and it just went really bad for her. Good. Isn't that what is wrestling ain't a game. Isn't that what Cummins did to your, your baby mama? Menace? Something like My that? Kid's mom? Yeah, something like that. Ah, uh, kind of. Yeah, she like, "Hey, Pat." She like pushed him. And like, <laughs> she was like, "I wrestle too." No. Nah. Well, she was what right. would you guys right. have you guys did you guys talk about John Jones uh stopping people yet? Have you guys did you no, guys, did you guys that. think yeah. that was staged? Did you, do you think that was staged? I you, I think it was staged. Dennis does. Did, yeah, we talked about it. Somebody conveniently had a had a camera filming him stopping people. <laughs> Hang on, Eves Edwards, Eves what's your what do you got? I didn't see it. I oh. heard about it, but I didn't see it. I don't. I don't spend. I don't fucking. I don't like social media, man. Yeah, can you play the clip for him? I could send it to him. I don't want to believe that that was staged. Because if that look, whether look whether it's staged or not, I'm all. I've been always a John Jones fan. I really don't yes. care he messes up in his personal life. I don't care. I don't understand why people always are happy or hating on him when he fucks up in his personal life. I don't care. He didn't sign up to be a role model. He didn't. We all. I personally do way more fucked up shit in my personal life than John Jones. Why? <laughs> you know what I mean? And ninety percent of people like do what? it. <laughs> why would I get into it? It's clearly a personal life. You know what I mean? Like, why would I? I don't know. That's so stupid. I never hated on him. You know, if anything, he deserves respect to be being the champ on you know while partying and being the champ. Like that's that's what I think. Yeah, that you just said it out. But I tell Menace it all the time, and I tell like our listeners. I don't care about dick pills. I don't care about cocaine. I don't care about crashing Bentleys with two hookers in the back. I don't give a shit what he's doing. When they when they ring the bell and he gets in the cage, he's the goat. That's that's what I'm watching. I don't care about his personal life. Why would I? Yeah, you know I mean, if I would have done way worse, if I did, if I had that kind of money or had that, that many belts, like I'm sure, you know, you and I are no better than him. Yeah, I remember. I think it was Joe Rogan who said something along the lines of like the baddest motherfucker in the world has to be a crazy motherfucker, something like that. And it's so yeah. true. Like, I, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wish he was better. He was doing better, and he wasn't messing up this much, so he he, would, he wouldn't you know have to stay away from the game and all of that. But like, if he he chooses to do what if he chooses to do what he does, I it's his life. I don't care. I can't be mad. Yeah. So I saw Chael Sonnen say that he thought it was staged. And then I got to Menace's house yesterday, and I was like, oh, you saw the John Jones thing? And he was like, dude, yeah, I did. That was staged. And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't want to believe it, you know? Well, the thing is, when you're doing good gestures, you don't film them. Yeah. Like, I, like, like, like I don't know. Like, just like, just do the right thing. That's it. No, like, whoa, whoa. Hang on. I'm about to do the right thing. Can you film it real quick? Can you get me doing but this? But he, here's my, what I think could have happened. He was out there, in, and th- that too. Why was he in the middle of the protests and whatnot? Whatever. He's there, wrong place, wrong time, right place, right time, whatever you want to say. Someone said, oh, shit, there's John Jones. He's a celebrity in New Mexico, so they started filming yeah, yeah. him. Then, whatever it was, that. he saw the kid with the spray paint. They were trying to vandalize yeah. somewhere in New Mexico. He's got New Mexico pride, even though he's from upstate New York, whatever. And he was like, yo, let me let me stop this real quick, and it happened to be caught on film. That that could that could be right. That could happen too. But also, I see if if it was staged. Look, I still don't blame him because there's so much shit on John Jones. I don't blame him for trying to come out for something good. Five for once. <laughs> Hang on. No. 
It was on his own Instagram first, no? No. <laughs> so, it was anywhere else. I don't think no. I didn't. It wasn't on his Instagram, was it? I don't know. Uh, no. But the, 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 another likely scenario, another possible scenario is, um, he was out there to protest. He saw these kids, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna stop these kids. Film me." Yeah. All right. It was it was posted on his Instagram, and he wrote, "Is this shit even about George Floyd anymore?" Why the fuck are you punk-ass teenagers destroying our cities? As a young black man, trust me, I'm frustrated as well, but this is not the way. We're starting to make the bad situation worse. If you really got love for our city, the 505, protect your shit. All you old heads need to speak up. Call your young family members and tell them to come home tonight. I I don't know. I think it was a a real thing, just a, a moment caught. But I could see where people would get it was staged, especially for someone who needs to do some PR to rehabilitate his image a little bit. Yeah, well, now the thing is, and we're not even hating that it was staged. It's like we're just we're just pointing out that it was staged because, like, even if it was staged, he's staging it for like a good cause. Yes. Yeah. You well, e- even after I read that, yeah, if anything, he's trying to create peace, if you will, stop vandalism, stop the protests, or at least the riots. Look, once again, everything is for the gram. I tweeted this the other day. It just came to my mind. Are you doing good deeds when no one is watching? No, you're not. No, because everything is for the gram. Social media changed our lives for the good and the in the worse. You know, for the good and the bad. I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, mostly for the bad, unfortunately, because we're using it that way. But we're not really showing. We're not really doing any more good deeds when no one is watching. We we want to show. We we do it to show it. Which is fine, better than not doing any good deeds, I guess. But you don't really mean it. So I said this. Say I said the same thing. Like you text or you you tweet or post or whatever it is. Happy Mother's Day or ha- Happy Birthday, Grandma. I love you. Does she have an Instagram page? Why don't you just I show it to her? I hate Why that. You, yeah. I fucking hate yeah. that. Look, I'm a mama's boy. I love my mom so much. I'm a I'm a big mama's boy. She doesn't have she doesn't have social media. Obviously, she's barely using her FaceTime, right? I never, people are like, yo, you're such a mama's boy. How come you never post anything about it? I'm like, because she doesn't have one. Nobody needs to see it. My love is for my mom. She sees, I show it to her. I will, I will, I will, I will tell you, I will post some stuff to my mom on Instagram because my mom does have Instagram and she likes it and she does try to use it to promote. My mom's into fitness, right? My mom, my mom is a trainer and she has, she, she's, she's 60 now, but my mom is in great shape. She's been in great shape my whole life. And I, I do like to, Show pictures of her because people who just recently follow me, they go, "Is that your mom?" And if they they follow her or they can, like, if it helps her business in any kind of way, cool. But yeah, I, get it. Like, I don't post things. I don't post things for my for my for 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 my dad who's passed. Yeah. You know, like he's not. He doesn't have Instagram. Like, yeah, I'm not but that's different. Everything. You have a reason. You're promoting or whatever. That's a, that's a different reason. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So I feel you. I feel you on that completely. I hate sure. when people post post. Yeah. Or, or, or I hate to see post people doing something for the homeless, like brah. Like I, I'm not buying that. I'm just not buying. Yeah. That. So before, before you continue on with that angle, like posting pictures with your mom or like your kids and stuff like that, that's also a place you can go in t- in a timeline to look at photos. That's saved. That's not on your phone. Yeah, no. If you if you're po- no, we're talking. We're not talking about posting pictures with your family. We're talking about posting happy birthday to somebody on Instagram when they don't have Instagram or or something like. I'll post like happy Mother's Day to my mom and and show pictures of her and like, this is my mom. Can you believe this is my mom? Like, and we're working out together or something like that because that's what she does. She's a fitness trainer. Now, you know? hang on, because I'm trying to like happy birthday to like a coworker and I'm posting on Instagram. Or happy birthday to my kids. Which one is worse? So happy I'm going to jump. Kids. That's worse to me. Because yes, like, tell I, your kids I, that. I, I agree with these, but also this is also my point. So people who are posting like happy birthday mom type of stuff, they're not even taking the time to visit them. They're not even oh. making that much time for them. Like, you know, my mom is so special to me. I, I'm i making all the time for her in my life while she's alive and while I can't. Yeah. But these people aren't even really making the right effort to show them appreciation towards them. Yeah. When was the last time you saw her or talked to her? Me? 
No, not I, you. I mean, someone uh, who posts something about their oh, mom. Oh, yeah. It, it, exactly. It. It, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, that's that's Good my own point. My little, guy, my little guys, like, they're a part of my life. So, just, like, people that, you know, send me sending pictures to everybody. Like, hey, that's how big my kid is now. I'm like, hey. Yeah. But you, but you're a great, but you're a great dad. You spend a lot of time with them. I have no problem with that. You're not really making it wrong. You know, you're not really giving us a false information, right? Per se, you know. Not every so, day, and yeah. the pictures that I choose, I try to make sure they're cool pictures. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with them. You're proud of and your kid. Up his little you brother, you know? kids. They're your kids. They're not the internet's kids. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're not hating on you, then it's it's okay. Yes, you are. No. Celebrate them all you want, man. Like, put them on the internet if you want, but we're talking about we're talking about like that. Well, the homeless, the homeless <laughs> people <laughs> thing. <laughs> like, yo, homeless guy. Here's a cheeseburger. I vi- I don't mind my friend who's videotaping it. That shit's yeah. cringe. That shit is cringe. Yeah. I hate that. And wrong too. Like this guy's obviously had a rough go of it especially lately yeah. he's fucking homeless he doesn't need yeah. you know logan paul or whoever running up like yo i got fucking a bag of fritos for you i hate this i ha- I hate those like hey homeless guy here's here's 20 bucks yeah <laughs> bro but you know what it is the sheep the sheep fall for that and they'll go follow like yeah Yes, it is the sheep life, man. I hashtag sheep life the other day, unfortunately, and I don't want to be that guy in the middle of this chaos. But let's find it. Let's know the difference. Them, let's know them, which is call which. Them what they are. Call them what huh? they are. Like you know, you say you hate being. No, don't hate that. That's who you are. Call call people. Call people what they are. Because here's I have this thing in my brain that's um, it's like you want someone to believe something about you, then just be that fucking thing. I don't have I don't have to promote. That yeah. I, I'm a dad or I'm this or that. Like, I'm just going to be that. When you find yeah. out, like, you find out. But I ain't doing it for you. I, I don't I, I don't like this whole this tap dancing yeah. for the world. Yeah. Look, if they're, they might be genuine. I will, I will never know the difference, right? God knows their heart. They might be genuine and really doing it for a cause. Maybe like yesterday I was in Laguna Beach. You know, I was out there. Look, there's nothing happening in Laguna Beach. And I saw a handful of, you know, good looking pretty white girls with posters and showing like like last mad and all of that i was like oh wow that's cute but i mean in my head you're doing it for the gram again of course 110 percent. i wish i hope they're genuine and really do making it for a cause but there's just like a handful of them there's no cops there's nothing going on it's just them and i feel like they're just there hey for that's one of the easy hey it's so easy to, to write a sign and go stand out on my street and hold that up and i didn't do anything i didn't do anything to help the cause I just put up a sign. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not there? Was it you that I was saying? Like, I'm not rioting. I'm not protesting unless, like, the banks, they're like, hey, we have your money. We're keeping it. Like, then I'm going out and burn some shit down. And probably banks. I'm going to fuck up some banks. But, like, besides that, like, me fucking flipping cars, that doesn't do anything, right? I don't, I don't. No, that's so, yeah. So here's 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 something that I saw. I saw a couple of days ago when this rioting first started. Um, people were throwing bricks in Minnesota. It started in Minnesota. People were throwing bricks at police cars, and and somebody sent me that like, yeah, they're mad. And I'm just like, man, they 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 get they got they got an infinite amount of money. They can get more cars. Those dudes, those dudes, they do who you kill that dude. They see still alive, like. Fuck it, that's what you go after. That that's that's my mentality. Right. right. It's like I like they got an inf- they got they got government money. They can get a new car. Like today. You know? But those that, that dude who killed those dudes who killed George Floyd, like they're still there. Like right. they need to be in prison, but somebody needs to put them in the ground. That's how or, I feel. Or or like they should be riding outside like that precinct or that Court they were house. outside of his house. They were outside of that. The 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 the. the, that, the yeah, that makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, but like then they sent protection. They sent the police sent protection to him. Yeah, they had as many cops at the guy's house as were there, like protesting. In in riot in riot gear, like squad. So that, but that kind of riot and you being mad and wanting to get that guy. 
That does make sense to me, but fucking up target it doesn't. And that's another thing though. You you can you can you can you can look Google and you will find there's like at these at these protests, there's like all these stacks of bricks. Like these people ain't bringing. They, they, there've been some people driving around handing out bricks to like these white people in their cars driving around handing out bricks to black people trying to get them to throw them and break shit. Like they, this, like there, there was there was a, a cop filmed going into the auto zone and setting it on fire and then sliding back in the police station. Like they, 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 a lot of this With shit. The is gas a mask setup. on that yeah. A lot of this shit is a setup. Like I, like I don't like like Al said, man. I, I don't like. You can go back in the history of this country. You can't trust this government. That's number one. Like, they're watching us right now. Edward Snowden told us the government was doing illegal shit. Now that motherfucker is a criminal for telling us the government was doing illegal shit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank then you. if you guys are into, like, the conspiracy side of things, you always hear about the guy George Soros. George Soros is all over this shit. Yeah, he's all over that. That's what I'm saying. Like, if there is anyone who's facilitating a pile of bricks being placed in an area where protesting is going to be, it could be a guy like that. Yeah, I've been seeing those pallets of bricks. Like, I think Chris Wade. Wade. Posted, there's some like in like uh, West Side County. Yeah, and Wade posted, "If I see something like, if I see you with a brick, I'm fucking you up." <laughs> Dude, the, the, the official Huntington Beach uh, Instagram page posted. They actually exposed this white supremacist. He was in Huntington Beach trying to protest, but he was trying to start shit, and it looks like. He is in there blended in, but he's actually there for a wrong, you know, he was just there to try to um, cause chaos. Yeah, instigate. Yeah, exactly. Some, so, some, I'll, I'll, yeah. some people have that screw loose in their head where they see this as even an opportunity to let out their anger about yeah. something else just because the cause and the shit's yeah, already like, going it's on. Like, it's like dressing crazy at being Halloween. They're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That won't think I'm crazy for doing yeah. this. Yeah, well, y- y- years years ago, something this 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 peaceful protest started in Turkey, right? They were, the government was trying to take down this park and start sh- and build a shopping mall or something. So a handful of people just showed up there and they said, "No, we're not gonna let this happen." They were just super peaceful protest. It ended up becoming a thirty day civil war, literally between the cops and the people. But let me tell you this. But and then I saw a bunch of interviews where they were talking to ca- cab drivers. Cab drivers said they were picking up a bunch of foreigners from the airport and taking them to the park where the protest was. Literally, there's fires going on and there's like gas, tear gas, and all kinds of crazy shit going on. I watched this on CNN Live here in America. Like four days. It went on for days. So people are always, those are always going to find the reason to go start shit. They're always going to find their reasons to go into that peaceful protest and actually change it upside down. So that's what we got to be careful for too. So. Yeah, and then the worst thing is obviously, like Eves was saying before, is that the negative element of it is going to affect the people that actually want change. Yeah, and it's going to be. That's, that's why. That's why they put these subversive characters in there. To, yeah. To, to help to help paint a narrative that this isn't legit to illegitimize the the the, the, the cause. And and that's yeah. like. That's that's really fucked up. It's yeah. fucked up on a whole different level. Like, and nobody's getting one, coronavirus either. You think you think and you think this you think this is the first time this this happened? Like they've been they've been protesting and rioting in this country since the beginning of this country since before this was a country. You think they haven't been putting plants in in the in those it, like fucking CIA the, the FBI had had people inside the Black Panther Party. Like, like they'll get black people to turn on black people. Like they, they just, it's, it's, just, it's fucking disgusting. Like, I, I fucking hate it. I fucking hate. I, I, bro, I get angry over shit like that. It's one of those things where it's like, like, what, what do you, somebody, Dennis, what happens? What happens to the dude? Somebody, imagine somebody kills one of your boys. What happens to them? Oh, he's gonna get fucked up. Like, like every everybody should have that attitude. Like, and I don't like. I'm if, if if one of my daughters and my son dies, like, like by by somebody else's hand, like I got to put that dude in the ground. I yeah. have to. Yeah. Like that heavyweight whose daughter got kidnapped and killed. Walt Harris. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, 
I think I would almost be like, yep, uh, just I don't want to press charges on the man. Let let him be. Let him acquit him. And then I find him with that movie. And then he takes him to a warehouse and tortures him for like. Oh, uh, law law abiding citizen. Yeah, that's I'm I'm doing something along those lines. Or or Samuel Jackson is a great movie uh, like that from years ago. Uh, with uh, who is that handsome blonde guy from Texas? Matthew McConaughey. Yes, him and uh, Samuel Jackson has a great movie about this. What does that mean? Uh, hmm. I'll look it up. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know the movie, but I know McConaughey. Oh, you gotta watch that movie. Himself. That is such a true. I don't know if it's based on a true story, but that is that happens today. Samuel Jackson ends up finding the killer of his daughter. Well, actually, sorry, she was raped, not killed. She was raped and stuff. Wait, don't, don't 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 give us the spoiler. Oh, uh, okay, my bad, my bad. But if you if you look, if you look at it, you'll find it if you go it. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. I like movies. Yeah, that's so a, that's like a good. That happens, yeah. Like, yeah. Bro, I'm, well, I'm watching. I'm watching Jeffrey Epstein next on Netflix. Uh, you got. I have. Uh, a wait, 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 wait. A a time to kill is the name of that movie. Oh, yeah, that sounds familiar. Okay, okay, okay. But yes, I you watch that Epstein shit. I'm I'm watching that next. I just finished today. I just finished um the Game Changers because I'm I'm been trying to be a vegetarian, and. uh I'm trying. It's not going great. <laughs> I got, I got. He's got a turkey leg in his hand. <laughs> I got two things for you guys to watch. Um, Waco. One of, them, one of them is called. It's on Netflix. The Untold History of the United States. I've seen that. I've yet to watch it. It's good. The Oliver Stone one, right? Oh yes. And um, there's another one. It's a YouTube documentary. And I'm trying to find it because a buddy sent it to me, and um, it's about it's about Epstein and Hollywood and a bunch yeah. of that. Shit. Oh yeah, Epstein has a new one on Netflix. That's a new one. I don't know if you're talking about the same one. I no, it's not. It's not the one on Netflix. I didn't know about that one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. Oh yeah, that just they just dropped that one, and you should add Waco to your list. Right, that's a, another great one. Waco was a, I didn't know Waco was a real story, a true story. So right? that happened. That happened in Texas. Yeah. After I moved, yeah, months after I moved to America, and it was in Texas. I was in Texas. Oh, I was wow. in Houston. So I was like three and a half hours away, and I had no idea. And I was in school. I remember being in school when that happened. I was in high school, um, and um, <laughs> I, I remember when they raided that 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 compound. Yeah, it was in the, in the middle of the week, in the middle of the afternoon, and they went yeah. in and they killed those people, and I was just yeah. like, this "Yeah, is- and and you were like, hey, this is how they walk." I was like, "This is America? America. <laughs> this is how this shit works here?" Look, this is again. I finished the whole show in like two or three days. I think I was so attached to it. And again, I'm not a religious guy or anything, and I don't support any of that. You know, him sleeping with all the women in there and stuff, whatever. But and I got, I was trying to get to the bottom of this, so I started looking up the like, real characters that survived that situation. And they keep saying the same thing. They're like, listen, we were not held there as hostages. And we we were trying to talk to them. They just came and started shooting. So again, and, and what did the government do? They covered it up. They yeah. made it look like there was a, there was, and again, according, apparently, according to the Texas law, the dude wasn't really breaking a bunch of laws there. Like he wasn't really doing anything wrong. Hey, what he was Mike. doing is, what he is doing is wrong, of course, at, you know. Ethically, it is very wrong. Everything is wrong. Him being married to underage, all of that. But did it really break a law where you needed to go, you know, kill them all? That's crazy. You broke a bigger law. Bro, yeah. I'm freaking shooting them. When you watch the Epstein thing, you're going to see some fucked up shit and hear some fucked up shit. I, I can't wait to watch. I'm so into that stuff. That's what I'm saying. Look, this is what I say. You and I, all none of us, will never, ever make a change. Because there's a higher power going on besides us. And when I say higher power, I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about someone above the government. Too, I'm right? Team. Yeah. So I don't know who it is. Whether you can say it's Rothschilds or you can say it's the, it's the Rockefellers. I don't know. I'm not, you know, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories, right? But nothing is ever going to change. Look, Listen. Epstein to the other guy who got just busted, um, another Steen. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're all the same. I don't know. You know who I'm talking about? No, uh, Weinstein. Weinstein. Now, all these motherfuckers, man. They like, were they were friends. Of course, of course, dude. I oh my god! I just watched this other thing. Some some lady was in 
every single Ep- Ep- she was behind every single Epstein operation, right? I just came across it on YouTube, and she's in pictures with politicians and all kinds of stuff. Apparently, she was on the island organizing this whole porn child orgy or whatever. Now she's nobody knows where she is. She has pictures with the Clintons. And oh. now nobody knows where she is. The funniest thing, like, yeah, it's so fucked up. Like, even Bill Clinton was our president. His wife was trying to be our president. But, like, Bill Clinton, they have him on record of being on the plane with Epstein, going to Epstein's island, flying on a private jet 26 times with Epstein. They ex oh, yeah. Clinton, you know this guy? He's like, I don't fucking know that guy. Oh, yeah, there you go. And you want me to believe the government? Really? Well, th- well, that's what they say. They say Epstein didn't commit suicide. He got Clinton. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I like that word, Clinton. He got Clinton. That's yeah. what they do. They take people out yeah. when they're about to start singing some songs about them. Show of me course. a room full of politicians and I'll show you a room full of criminals. Um, the name of that documentary I was talking about, Al, it's called Out of, yeah. out of Shadows. It's on Out of Shadows. I'm, I'm shadows putting it on the list. So yeah, we could sit here and talk movies, politics, all this shit, but it's not the best conversation. So what we'll do is we'll go back to fighting for a second. We'll That's t- what we know. We'll make some picks and do a little preview of UFC 250. So we'll start right at the bottom. We'll go a quick runoff till we get to the fights we care about, and we'll talk about them. So Evan Dunham versus Herbert Burns. Herbert Burns. Evan Dunham. <sighs> I want Evan Dunham to win, but I just think his time may be past. Or I'm going to take Burns and put money on it. All right. Devin Clark versus Alonzo Menafield. Devin Clark. Devin Menafield. I don't know them. Devin, right. Cl- Devin Clark is John Jones's boy. Oh, okay. So we'll go with him. Okay. Juicy A Formiga versus Alex Perez. Formiga. 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 Did it take a fight off here? Oh, no. Charles Boyd versus Maki Patolo. Don't know. Maki. Don't know. Yeah, that's, I don't know either. that's one of those ones where you go with whichever name you think is cooler. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Charles Bird. Oh, I'm going Wait, I know, I know Charles Bird. He was on Contenders. Yeah. I'm going to go with Bird just because I remember him from Contenders. So now even this fight, I found some news today that kind of changed like what we were talking about the other day, Menace. Cody Stamen versus Brian Kelleher. Cody Stamen, his brother died like a week ago. And he's still going through with the fight. Yeah. That's um, one of those things, man, where, where it could be motivation or distraction. It gives you invincibility. Yeah. That's a weird I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it'll fire him up just to fight on his honor. I think uh, Kelleher is really killing it recently, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I I can't pick. It's one of those things that, like, I feel like this is what happened with Walt Harris. You know, he's fighting with a lot of emotion and um, emotional gas. You man, he he saw an opportunity to get Overeem out of there, and yeah. he had it all in. He was he was emotional. He was wasn't focused. He wasn't in the fight zone. He was in a in a in a passion zone, and he gassed himself out. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what happened in that fight. He rocked the Overeem too. Early in that yeah. fight, I mean, that's what, yeah, Cody could be in that situation, but he could also it could also be something that just kind of lasers in his focus, and he may just be really super sharp. But it may it, it's one of those things that can, it can be focus or, or a distraction, man. So, like, I don't know. I for me, I don't think if my if I'm close to my brother and I lost him, like, nah, no, nah, I'm not doing this. You're not fighting. No, nah, not 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 right now. I got I got. I got shit to. There's bigger out. things than fighting. I hear your point. I would, I would step back to. There's bigger things than fighting sometimes in life. So I think for me, like my brother used to always come into my fights. That might be one of those things. Like I have to lose for Jay. I will be invincible. No one like I will like. That's what he he said. And that's you already getting emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, then I guess Stamen's getting emotional because that's what he said, and justifiably he said that he has to go through with the fight for for his brother. You know, like an honor of his brother. I'm going to go with Brian, Brian, though, just because he's my, you know, I'm trying to. I'm going to go with Brian because of the fact that uh, Stan's brother died. Also, you know, Boom Brian's a Lima guy. He's been, you know, I've trained with the man. He's on a surge. You know, the homie Brian Michelino's there cornering him. 
you know, movementbjj.com is over there. Yeah. I saw a video of Michelino. You probably trained with Michelino when uh, you came to Long Island Eves. And, and Alp, you know Michelino, right? No. I know he is, but I don't remember training with him. Oh, sorry, you're talking to Alp. He does no, like... I saw him. He was doing like the sticks. He was beating Mitch, uh, beating Kelher up with the sticks. Oh. Like instead of the pads. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going Kelleher in that one as well. Ian Heinish versus Gerald Mershart. Who did I pick last night? I don't know Heinish. You picked Heinish because Heinish likes Menace and the Man stuff. Yep. Mershart stuff, but I don't know Heinish. So I can't pick that one. Pass. All right, well, well, we'll go Heinish. Chase Hooper and Alex Caceres. Ooh. I've always liked Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Leroy, so I'm going to yeah, go with him. Uh, he is a character. I'm with you on that one. Did I go with Hooper last night? Yeah, because I told you the story of Hooper interviewing Masvidal and saying, you beat up my dad. Oh, right, right, right. And then he was like, who's your dad? He was like, Ben Askren. He was like, oh, shit, I'm sorry, son. Oh, is that the guy? Yeah. Dude, okay, I I commented on that. Everybody keeps like, "Oh my dad, dad, dad." I'm like, dude, you have no respect, your mama. Come on, okay, we get it. we get the joke. Like, stop calling someone else your dad, dad, dad. Like, that's okay, stupid joke. Move on. Yeah. Is that the, is is that the way you're trying to market yourself? Okay, move on. I get you get you have fur, curly hair. Move on. The UFC find a different way. To, the find a different way to promote yourself. I get it. The UFC just marketed marketed it as if it was like an episode of Family Matters. And it was Ben Askren's the dad. Sean O'Malley's one of the kids. Chase Hopper's one of the kids. No, nobody. No, I'm not calling anybody. Even it's a joke. I'm sorry. I have respect for my family. I'm not calling nobody my dad. Yes. So Eddie Wineland and Sean O'Malley. Uh, that's a good fight for O'Malley. I mean, that's a good question mark. But I think he's really been improving, man. And um, Wineland, Wineland is really close to his ceiling. He's, he's, he's legit. He's been around for a long time. But, like, how much more improved is he, is he going to get versus how improved is O'Malley going to get? And I think O'Malley is – he's doing what he needs to do. So I think O'Malley takes that fight. I think O'Malley I think O'Malley's going to take it too. But I've been following Wineland since the WC days. I always looked up to him and had a lot of respect for him. I hope he takes it, but I think O'Malley is, uh, is the new it ain't, it ain't gonna, if, if, if he gets taken out of there, it's going to have to be quick and he gets caught. But it's not gonna be. Oh yeah. It's not gonna be a walk in the park. It's not gonna be easy unless he clips him and catches him. Yeah. I, so, but I, in my, I think I think we we should focus on this. Thing. A lot of those guys, guys like Eddie Wineland, they don't really they come to fight, but yep. they they're not that healthy anymore. They they don't show that to anybody. I'm telling you. You think they perform at their best? They're hurting every day, man. I'm telling you. You can't be fighting for that long. I've been there. <laughs> and exactly. I'm the same here. And oh. I'm sure Dennis as well. So. He's probably at fifty percent right now, but he'll still come. He still has a round in him, and that's all it takes sometimes. So, well, even menace, you got out pretty good, right? Yeah. Are you aching every day? Uh, yeah. We had Ung Lasong asked him that last night. He was like, "Dennis, why aren't you making a comeback? Like, what are you doing?" <laughs> who? Who? Ung Lasong, the one FC double champ. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you were talking about the one championship. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the uh, uh, Team Alpha Male, chi- Chinese guy from Team Alpha Male. You no. Know, no. Uh, no, not Takashi. All right, so I'm going. we're all going O'Malley on that one. Neil Magny versus Anthony Rocco Martin. Neil Magny. Oh, Rocco. Rocco, man. I like Rocco. Yeah. How- I don't like Rocco because he beat Ryan LaFlair, but I'm going with Rocco. I think he beats Neil Magny. Yeah, Magny's one of those guys, man. He's he's like he's a real good gatekeeper, but um, like Get- he'll, be, he'll he'll fucking start some guys that you think he's gonna lose to. But like, there's a lot of people that that he just he doesn't match up well with. Yeah, well, he, he, cardio is his biggest attribute. So if you yeah. if you don't put him away and you let him hang around. He'll steal the second half of that fight. That's what happened with Gastelum. Remember that uh, Hector Lombard fight? Yeah. That fight was crazy. So, yeah. I'm go- I'm- Hector was actually going to kill him. Yeah. Murder. I thought he was actually going to commit murder. And I'm like, what's happening right now? What? What? 
Were you friends with uh, Hector Eves when you were in Florida? Yeah, kind of. I mean, we're cool. <laughs> Hector, Hector's a strange cat, man. Oh, he's crazy, Hector, yeah. Like, Hector, so we had, there's this, two scenarios. One, um, I'm talking to Hector, and we're just having a conversation. He sees this kid, and he goes, he goes, hey, motherfucker, come here. And he's like, he's just like, he just goes off on this kid, and he turns back to me, and it's like, hey. And I'm just like, whoa. And then um, there's this other time, Mike Brown calls me over. Mike is like, hey, Eve, come over here, man, come over here. Hector, tell him what you said. And Hector was trying to tell me how, <laughs> this is crazy. Hector was trying to tell me how Michelle Obama was a man, and I need to give him proof. <laughs> was it? And I'm like, bro, you got to give me proof. I, I don't even fucking care. Are you making it like you? You don't want to come up with some outrageous fucking thing. I have to show I've, you. I've heard that conspiracy that she's a man. Really? That's so. That's, that's the stupidest there. conspiracy. That's, that's, that's the stupidest that's the one. Biggest I've done. piece of racism. It's a joke. Yeah, it's like a racist joke, actually. Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> but yeah, it's not. Hector. <laughs> Hector's a big Menace in the Man fan, and we actually joke and we say he's our political correspondent. Hector, is, <laughs> he, Hector, Hector, bro, Hector is fucking smart too. But he's like, he's like, if you sit, if you sit down and talk to Hector about, you stay away from politics. Like, you really see how smart that dude is, bro. He, he he's so deep into politics right now. When we ask him to come on, he's like, "Can we talk about Bernie Sanders and politics?" We're like, "Yeah, sure." Oh, I'm so down to that kind of stuff, dude. You actually have been a politician. I just don't want people to hate me. That's why I'm not getting to that point. Yeah, I'm so into it. You have an no idea. Yeah, so, I, I hate them all. And we have, we I have. Hate them all. I I like being aware. I'm yeah. not supporting anybody. I like knowing everything, but I'm not in. I'm not up for anybody. I don't support anybody. I just like knowing everything. It's, it's the reason why you don't support anybody is because of what you know. Yeah, exactly. That's why I want to know. We have yeah. a we have a few funny Hector stories. One where he tried to beat me up or was about to beat me up at a CES event in New York. We won't get to that one. But then we had him on the show one time, and he's sitting in like a grotto in Florida talking politics. And all of a sudden, someone uh, he's talking to me in Menace, and someone said, "Yo, you shouldn't be talking politics." And he goes, "Why don't you shut the fuck up, man? Get the fuck out! I'll beat the, like I'll fuck you up right now. Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> and then he's like, talk, you know, looking in our phone, talking to the guy, and then he walks away. He's like fucking asshole man and we're like what happened he's like i don't know this fucking guy about to fucking beat this fucking guy's ass uh, how's his uh how's his english he pretty, speaks pretty good yeah pretty good that was a horrible impersonation but yeah, yeah his, his english is pretty good okay so aljermaine sterling Corey sanhagen i like uh, aljermaine i don't want aljermaine to win i'm picking aljo yeah. aljo i'm picking aljo too yes this is definitely an aljo friendly show as well as out probably many rounds with Aljo, menace many oh. rounds with Aljo. Oh gosh, I hated every single round. Dennis did. <laughs> De- Dennis hated a lot of those rounds too. I trained with Aljo before he got into the UFC. When I came out, Dennis, the first the first time I came out, and Aljo was at the gym with you guys, and I was like, man, and this was before he's in the UFC, like, man, this fucking kid, he's tiny but he's good. Yeah. Like he gave me all kinds of problems. I remember. What a spider monkey. Yeah, he 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 always reminded me of John Jones in some ways because of the uh, you know like unorthodox wow. stuff he can do. <laughs> no, <laughs> well maybe <laughs> maybe of course that has a lot to do with it, but also about you know all the unorthodox stuff he can do. And I think now he's he's so smart, man. He's a fight nerd. He watches every single fight. He knows his opponents. That's what he does for fun in his in his free time. He just sits down and watches fights. So he definitely has a great future. Dedicated. Yeah. Dedicated, very dedicated. And yeah, back in the day, Aljo, we talked about it. He was like a nomad, similar to out, like he was at every yeah. gym. And yeah. he, he used to come into Lima a lot. Yeah. But yes, we're all going to Aljamain. Co main event, Rafaela Sunsau, Cody Galbrandt. I I like both those guys. I would like to see Cody win. Here's my problem with Cody Cody has that disease Dustin used to have. Where when you get hurt, you just f- say fuck it and you go, and um, that's when he gets into trouble. But technically, he's one of the most fucking sound guys. When he stays within himself, he's one of the most sound guys in the game. His boxing, his footwork, his wrestling. But like when he gets hurt, then he just go. He just goes, kill or be killed, and that's when he gets into trouble. Um, and Asuncio, 
is not like that. Vicente has been around and he's smart and he can compete with anybody on any level. Cody, I think, is a better, sharper striker. But if he if 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 he Cody gets hurt and he goes to that place with with Sunsiao, he don't take a Sunsiao out in the next five seconds. He's getting stuck. One thing that can be pointed out about Cody for this fight, he changed camps a little bit, and he's been working with Mark Henry. He's been in New Jersey, so he's had Edgar to go with Lance Palmer. Like he changed up his uh, probably we'll see a different Cody Galbrandt. I think. Can can I tell you something about I don't know Eves? Maybe you could correct me because you train a lot of good guys, obviously, and and some you know a lot of good guys come into your gym and you know for camps and stuff. But this is I don't know how much that helps you when you just go for a couple of months for a new fight, right? I mean, he's been off and he's been training at different gyms. It scientifically it takes about six months to change your body mechanics and being able to do some of those things as as muscle memory, right? So how much is that going to play in factor? No, I don't think, I think, he's been, I think he's been there for a minute. Okay, I mean, okay, that's just my, that's just my, you know. I don't think it's just opinion, been like but... a couple months, right, Stan? I think he's been there like since like PFL's last season because I know he was training with. Um... Yeah, yeah, but and then look, they go to a new gym for let's say four months, five months, whatever, for a camp. They win, they give a shout out to that gym, and then they lose the same next fight. Then what happens? You know, what I mean, like, how much is that new gym helping you? Actually, I'm not saying it's not helping you. But I'm saying, did you take enough time to adapt that style, that new gym style to you? Because you know, you need you need hours and hours, thousands, of, hundreds of hours in the gym to make the muscle memory, right? That game plan. Like you just go in there and say, okay, this round I'm gonna throw a one, two, three combo. It just has to come to you because you react to things in under less than a second. I, here's here's I my agree. what I'm gonna say on that. Sorry, real quick. Is like for me, one of the reasons why I kind of retired is like, man, I've been the same gym. I was just like tired kind of when you move to a new gym it's like something's different different people it's kind of like your all your senses get kind of heightened and because you, you don't know you don't know exactly what to expect and it's like kind of like refresh it's like giving your car like a good car wash like it's like yeah my car's back to new again i'm gonna go after eves go ahead eves i agree with what you said out here's the thing you see a lot you see guys go to a new gym and their first fight Win or lose, they look kind of like they did, but they don't look very sharp. And then the next fight, they look better. The thing about those guys with Mark Henry and, and, and them, I feel like they are really good at coaching and keeping you within yourself. So it's not a whole lot of new things when it comes to the fight. It's, I feel like they, they implement their strategy and their style to your game slowly because, and what I'm using as a reference is like Lance Palmer. Like he came to the, he came back to the PFL second season and his first fight, he'd been training with Frankie and those guys for, for the whole off season. Um, he left extreme couture. Um, but he looked a lot like Lance Palmer in that first fight, but he started to open up more in the second. And then the one after that, I feel like I've seen that. I can't remember who else that I would apply that to, but I feel like it may have been, um, Edson Barbosa because he was going to ATT for a long time. And then he went up there, and now he's back at ATT. I think he's back at ATT now. Yeah. But um, I I I think they I think they are good about that, and I I feel like Cody Garbrandt would be similar. But if Mark, I, so I think Cody Garbrandt is the same guy. Now, can Mark Henry break that savage in him, or not break it, but control that savage in him so he doesn't doesn't go off if he gets hurt? I think that's really the only thing you can you got to do for that kid right now. He's just gonna constantly improve. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with I agree with you, Eves, and, and and about what you said, Dennis. For example, okay, so like you've been in the same gym for a long time. When you go to a new gym, that's more about the excitement you need. Like you don't want to go to this. Like you, when you're at Lima, for example, great gym, right? But you've been in the same gym with the same partners for a long time. You're not. You don't wake up with the same excitement anymore to go to practice. Right. It's different. So that's sometimes a new gym comes in handy. Otherwise, I don't really think Mark Henry has a special sauce, if you ask me. Lance Palmer is a great guy. who He's going to be a champ anywhere he goes. It's just about motivating him and giving him little details here and there. That's my that's my opinion. You know, same I, thing I, with Cody Garbrandt. And I'm curious to see how his chin is. He took some damage, man. People, look, as a retired fighter to myself, people are really taking these knockouts very lightly. Like, you keep getting knocked out back to back. 
and all the hours you put in the gym, because we only see them get knocked out. But how about all the hours of sparring you put in the gym? That matters. Yep. It adds up. And you don't hear about that. You don't hear about time. You don't hear about that. Well, Some of these guys spar four days a week. Yeah. And he, yeah, Co- right. Cody's coming off three losses in a row. T- t- two to TJ and one to Pedro Munoz. All knockouts. They were all knockouts. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go Cody, though. I think Cody, I think if you don't. I'm uh, going to out. But also that, if he doesn't adjust his style and learn from those three knockouts, then his career might be on a, re- on a real downturn. I, no, maybe I, it should be over. Just for you. Bro, people take their health, health not very seriously. He's still young. You life to live. He's twenty eight. He's still very young. Yeah, but you you don't feel it and now. Yeah, when's the last time he's fought? He's, he hasn't fought in a while either. Fought Let, when Usman and, and Woodley fought. He, he fought last year. He fought Munoz, twenty nineteen. So a year for his brain to get unrattled, I think, is you more know, than like, most hey, people. Hey, hey, CT, you don't go away. That shit stays with you when he's dead. We don't. We only. Yes, exactly. And we only think when you have a concussion. You only think when you have that headache. You have. You have a concussion. Every single punch gives you a concussion. You don't have to feel them all. Look, this is the only place I promote right now, and I vouch for. I've been personally going to a place um, called Advanced Hyperbarics. You know, I go get and stay in the tank for about an hour. I'm look. Everybody should look into it. Whoever has been hit and been in this fighting game or football game, whatever it is, this is a serious problem. Like you may not feel it or see it today, but you need to go get your brain checked. It just gets worse. That's it. It just gets worse. I don't have any problem. Don't get me wrong. I don't have any problem. Not come more. Thank God. But I want to see myself twenty years from today. You know, still smart. You know, I'm smart today. I like to be smart twenty years from today too. So, I mean, I like to take precautions. I don't think this is this is something people should be taking lightly. Like Chuck Liddell should have never been. License to fight. What the fuck? Like Tito? Yeah, no. Are you kidding me? Like, Tito Ortiz is healthy. I see him often in Huntington Beach. He's healthy. He, he's a workhorse. But what I'm trying to say is, how? who the hell licensed Chuck Liddell? Who did it? it? They should have been illegal. That's against the law. Come on. It wasn't against Like, who's going to... Like, yeah, come on. That's Dale Hoya, Dale Hoya paid that, paid that... Yeah, I was going to say... Because he's, he's, he's brain that himself. That's Some, why. Someone who got a bag of money, that's who licensed them. Yeah. They didn't make a lot of money. I mean, oh, oh you mean, I, I know what you mean. Chuck so, Liddell didn't make a lot of money. I know what you mean, but yeah. yeah. So so what do we got? Galbrandt or Asun Sal? Galbrandt. Uh, I'm going Galbrandt. Asun Sal. Uh, so Amanda Nunes, Felicia Spencer. Amanda. That's a tough one. Amanda. I'm jo- being sarcastic when I say it's a tough one. Everyone's going to go Please. with Amanda, yeah. Look, she, for, the Canadian chick is very tough, but Amanda's going to take it. <laughs> Menace. Like, like, chick, chick ain't, like, you saw what she did to Cyborg. Chick ain't, even Cyborg ain't never been hit like that in MMA fight. Like, Amanda, Amanda hits like a man. Yeah. Like, she, she don't fuck around, bro. You ever move around with her? Little bit, but I never, like, moved around with her live. But, like, I <laughs> like, know, I know dudes. Well, who, we stop right there. Yeah, I know some dudes who've been hit by her and they're like, she hits like a man. I'm yeah. I'm going Felicia Spencer. Wow. Yep. She's gonna make some money if she wins. I think she's like five to one. Yeah. I think she pulls off the what upset. Do you throw out that stand? Fifty bucks. Yeah, fifty gets you two fifty. I could do that. I feel like I feel like Amanda, when she, when she won that title, especially like she hit a different stride. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Her, her, when, when, who did she lose to? Cat? After that fight with Cat, I think she started to put some things together. And when she won that title, she was just like, I'm not fucking stopping. She, she might, she might be one of those kind of girls who, she might retire and like, holding on to those belts. Well, she's got a kid on the way. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. That, that could be another source of motivation for her. She is really family oriented. You know, um, I don't know, man. Amanda, Amanda's legit for real. She works hard as fuck. She's not like, she's not taking this as a joke. She, like, her life has been changed. And she appreciates that. Yeah. All right. So, and, hey, uh, Yves, did, did Stan, Stan, you know, you just had a daughter? 
Yes, but we talked about it beforehand. Well, look at look at this guy, Eves. What the fuck's yeah, wrong no, with him? That, that's, that's, I'm just, if I missed that, I just wanted to make sure I got good, it touched but, on. It's all good. No, it's all, I don't want to touch on it. That's just, yeah. Like, why why don't Dennis, you text him congrats? Not, yeah. Like, I don't like posting stuff on the internet. <laughs> congrats. No, nah, it's a it's a it's a joke that you missed earlier, Menace. We don't we don't talk about kids on this show, <laughs> right? Unless they're menaces. Yeah. But so that'll I conclude. You, I still love you. Uh, that'll conclude our UFC 250 talk. So before one more, and then we'll wrap this one up. What do you guys think of Mike Tyson coming back? As we were talking about CTE oh. and guys who shouldn't fight and whatnot. Mike Tyson is one of like he's not the goat. I would put that on Ali. But he's right. He's 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 a part of the what is it? The herd of goats. And um, um, but but at at fifty something. Fifty three. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't. He's, that's ten years. He's got ten years on me. I don't. I I don't. That heavyweight. And he's he still looks good, and he still can yeah, crack, hang but, on. Like I think he's taking some nice vitamins. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know this. Like a lot. Like uh, do you know about the end of Mike Tyson's career? Yeah. You know well, that, it, it was horrible. Losing, like nobody's. It was horrible. Yeah. There's no reason for him to come back. Like people don't know about that because of how great he was, and um, that's what they're gonna remember. But if he comes back now, like it's just I don't know. It's just different. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I I can go back and watch some old Mike Tyson stuff. He's moving around, hitting mitts, and he looks good. He looks good. Like he's a student of boxing. He loves boxing. Custom model raised him right, and he raised himself right. He went and watched old tapes. Like Mike, I guarantee you, Mike Tyson saw the fucking Willie Pep. Willie Pep won a won a round. He, he goes to the corner and tells his corner, "Like I'm gonna win this round. I'm not gonna throw a single punch." He won the round. I know Mike Tyson seen that video. I don't. I don't, I've only heard of it. You know, like he he studied boxing. He knows so much about boxing, man. Um, and the way he could still move, he could still be offensive, he could still do things. Mike Tyson, I don't care who it is. It could be another 53 year old, it could be a 60 something year old. Mike Tyson don't need to get hit anymore, man. He's done way too much for boxing. Yeah, I think once he does get hit again, he'll be like, oh, now I remember why I stopped doing this. In 2005, 15 years ago. I don't know. I like, fuck, one of the greatest ever. I would say on the on that list of greatest ever, I'd put him as my number two. Yeah, C- I, com- just, combat sports I legend. I I just don't understand. So I'm assuming he has a good amount of money, right? Like, enjoy your life, man. Enjoy. How many more years do you have left? Who knows? God knows, right? It's enjoy life. Uh, people, that's the live for is to compete and fucking. I yes, I get that, but people who love him around him needs to tell him the truth, though. Mike Tyson's you know I mean? also not that guy anymore. Like when yeah. when he when he was the heavyweight champion of the world, he was a different guy. He's he's got too much love in his heart. Like now, yeah. Like like then he was just like he would fucking crush everybody. Psychedelics do that to you. Fight a car, <laughs> a rhinoceros. You know, like now, I don't. I just don't think he has that. He has that killer in him anymore. I'm sure it can be raised for the right reasons, but I don't know if competition's that reason. Yeah, I don't. I'll know. watch whatever he does, but I don't want to watch. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to watch. Her. How much is it? Sixty-five bucks. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to see. Like I also don't want to see Tyson get hurt. Yeah, God forbid. Yeah, I, I, I would pay. I would pay to watch Mike Tyson fight Peter McNeely. Again. Again. I would. That, pay. That, that's, that's it. I would want. Like, do I want to see him fight? Yeah, but I want to see him fight like the greeter at Walmart. You know, like, I don't want to see, they're talking about him fighting Shannon Briggs. I'm like, no. Even him versus Evander Holyfield, that will hurt my heart to see them add more damage to what they already got Did going on. Did you see on. Kosaka and Crow Cop? Uh, fighting? Yeah. Again? No, they did, no. In their last fight in Ryzen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, <laughs> they look like two people's grand- grandparents fighting. Exactly. Dude, um, Crow Cop had a stroke. Oh, and shit. he's still, he's still training and stuff. I mean, that guy doesn't. His his last days in this planet is not gonna be pretty. No, I'm telling you, that's what bothers me because I have so much respect for these guys. We all do, right? We all looked up to them and watched them. Do you want to see them with diapers in the future? 
You know, yeah, like, no. do you want to see them being, being, you know, being stuck Not in bed and somebody they are, start... recognizing their kids? No, exactly. Man. I mean, I still, you know, you can see like they. I don't want to see them on punch drug and stuff, man. That's not cool. People think this is, you know, no, this is not cool. Like, Ali had his faculties, but he had Parkinson's, and you don't get Parkinson's for fighting. I'm sure he had some punch in his throat, but, um, like, like that was sad, you know? Yeah. It, that, that fucking hurt to, to, to see that guy like that. Um, but, like, imagine, and Matt, like, it fucking, like, it fucking hurts to see Matt Hughes, you know? Yeah. It breaks my heart when I see that guy. Yeah. You know, I don't want to say, I don't, like, there's, there's a re- enough of us are going to have issues when it comes. Well, if we get if we get to the right age, enough of us are going to have issues. Like we don't fucking need to be doing anything to make it worse. Yeah. All right, fellas, let's wrap this bitch up. Eves Edwards, you're the man. Thank you for joining us, for helping fill in for Menace. Out. Dennis, thank you for coming to our show. Thug Jitsu ass the man having... show. Yeah, this is our. I was filling in for Squid. He was filling in for you, and then we just decided to make a whole new show. So. I like Th- it. Thug Jitsu, Thug, Thug Jitsu, Master and the Man. Alp Oz Killick, thanks for being our first guest. Thank you, Alp. Craig Thank Jones. You. Good, Thank to you, meet. Good to talk to you for real, man. Yeah. Thank you, all you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Eve, good talking. You too, brother. I'll see you when all I get right. back out to Cali. I'll definitely yes, sir, for talk, sure. For sure. I will DM you for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, brother. And Menace, right. thank you for joining the show. Me and Eve's thanks appreciate you coming me. on. Thank you. All right, everybody, stay safe out there, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Don't do anything out of the house. One or 70-something? What'd you say? What episode is this? Episode one, or is it episode 70-something? It could be episode 80, or it's episode one. We'll decide that afterward. I'm going to cover. There's a Menace in the Man logo. I'm going to make that Thug Jitsu in the Man and cover it with that. Let's put a stamp on it. Yeah. Ease, what was the show you told me? The YouTube show? I'm going to watch it now. Out of shot. Oh shit! Um, of, yeah. I just sent it to um. I also sent it to Stan. Let me just double check, make sure I got the name right. Out of shadows. Out of shadows. Yes. Out of the shadows. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Nice See you guys. Peace. All right, Peace. fellas. Have a good night. You too, brothers. <laughs>